that's what I want to talk about tonight. So how are you going to support your kid in math? Um, especially if you are a parent that was struggled with math, that you don't enjoy math, you don't feel like math was your strong suit, and then you see your child frustrating. And I think that's one of the hardest things as a parent to not be there to be able to help and assist our, our children when they are you know struggling. And one thing I found as being a teacher, the impact that the parents can have on their students' um, student success is paramount. You know, their their actions and the way that they support their student can make all the difference. And here's the cool thing. It doesn't matter if the parents are good at math or not. And actually, I'd probably say even to the contrary, a lot of times it's when parents are good at math, that is actually sometimes where a lot of the issues are going to arise. So now that I am stepped away from the classroom as a teacher, and I am now a parent to um, three daughters that are now going through the school system, I have to look at myself as from the parent perspective, not so much as from the teacher's perspective, and try to see like how best I can do to support my children. So I came up with some tips that I want um, any parent to be able to, or anybody that's like helping a struggling student or just any student that's going through math, they don't have to be struggling, but just a ways to kind of think about and think about how they can help them be the best version of themselves and, you know, have success, have enjoyment of math, not hate waking up in the morning saying, I don't want to go to school. I don't want to do this math. That is, um, that is my goal for everything I want to talk about, um, in this video. So I think the number one thing that I have seen throughout history of being a math teacher and even being in the math classroom is this acceptance that it is, it is okay to not be good at math, right? We've seen it all before people tell, you know, when, anytime I tell somebody I'm a math teacher, they're like, oh yeah, I hated math. Like I was never good at math. Like that, that's how they can sometimes relate to the subject. And it's okay. Like I've never seen in any other class where people like fail a math test and they're like congratulating, like, oh, it's okay. Like math stinks. Like math sucks. Like it's okay. And there's, there's this, I wouldn't say the stigma, but there's like this acceptance that it's okay to be bad at math. It's okay to say like, I'm not a math person. And I think that is extremely detrimental to our young students when we say that, you know, to them, when they are struggling or when they are, you know, saying they don't like the math class and everything else. And again, there is a lot of things we could talk about as far as education and how we're teaching math and everything else. But I don't want to uh, normalize the idea that it is okay to not be good at math. And so I don't want you to say like, it's okay. I was never good at math. That's your, you know, your uncle Steve was the one that's good at math. Like our family, we're not math people. Don't say that. Um, because what that does is that internalizes with that student that it is okay to not be good. It is okay not to try or that they can't be good at math. And we want our students to achieve the highest level of learning that they possibly can. And that comes with, you know, we talk about like that growth mindset that they can overcome those challenges. But if they believe that they're not going to be good at math um, because that is like internalized, that's who they are, it's much easier for them to give up when the going gets tough. So um, I always like to, you know, tell students that, um, you know, there is no such thing as good math people and not math people. We all obviously have our own strengths, but there is a, but we, um, are in control of what we're able to learn by putting in our work and our effort. And that is going to be the most important, um, most important way for us to be successful in math. And I think one of the things we can do, especially if we are not a person or a parent that is like strong in math. So it's like, what are you gonna do? Like your student comes home, they don't know how to do their homework. And they're like, I don't know how to do this. And you're like, oh, go and see, you know, check out Brian McLogan on YouTube and watch him. Like, yeah, that's great. It's a little joke. But my point that I want to bring into is like, it's okay not to be good at math. I think the most important thing for a parent um, or anybody that is, you know, supporting a student going through school is to make sure that you are, you know, checking in um, with them on top of their grades and making sure that they are doing what they need to do to be successful. Right. We don't want to be like hounding on the teacher because I've been there before and it can be very frustrating sometimes. Like, you know, we're, we're trying to mold our students to take into control. And obviously I'm talking a little bit more about high school um, in this regard. But, you know, it's if we don't know our math, that's fine. What we can do, though, is make sure that we are, you know, stand on top. We understand when our student is in need of extra assistance, either, you know, going, watching some stuff, spending more time online, watching stuff or getting a tutor. A lot of times what I found 
um, sometimes with parents, it's either they don't want to deal with the math. They're like, oh, that's your that's your job. Like, I don't know math. So, you know, figure it out. Um, and they, they sometimes just wait till the end of the quarter, because this is always what happened as a teacher at the end of the quarter. Um, here's what I have. You know, students would have a failing grade. And then then the parents are emailing me constantly, like, what are we going to do? How do we get this grade up? And, you know, it, it's very difficult at that time to, you know, a lot of times everything was just like, what do we got to do to get the grade up? It wasn't about learning. It wasn't about helping the student. It was just about getting the grade up, right? Because that was like the carrot um, for the student and the parent. And so I think as a parent, it, when you have constant communication um, with your child, preferably going through with their teacher, making sure that you are staying on top of them when they are struggling, that you know, we can go and provide support early. Um, not waiting till the end. Um, and sometimes, you know, teachers are really good with communication. Sometimes they're not, right? Every person is going to be different how they're going to manage the classroom. And I always welcomed, you know, parents who reach out to me, you know, and kind of see how they can support their students. And I think that's really, really important. It's not about, you know, de demanding from the teacher, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? But it's like, what can I do as the parent? Because I always talk about it as the Trinity. You have the teacher, you have the parent and you have the student and they all have to be able to work together. And so I always welcomed um, when parents would reach out to me and like, hey, how can I support my student better, right? They're, str they're starting to struggle, what can we do? And we would outline some tips and we'd outline some steps what they need to do and what I wanted to see from them as far as getting improvements. I don't wanna see a parent constantly you know, harassing me over and over and over again. And like, it's like, go through your student. Your student does need to learn how to take initiative um, or on the flip side of that is not do anything and then wait till the end of the quarter once they failed and be like, oh crap, now I gotta, you know, now we gotta figure this out. It's like, that's kind of difficult to overcome there. So I think just staying on top of your students' progress, staying on top of their grades, making sure when they're bringing stuff home that you are, you know, reviewing it, which we'll talk about later. But um, just having a good idea of where your student stands. And I know definitely when you're getting with high school, a lot of kids don't wanna tell their parents anything and stuff like that. But I think that's the role of the parent, um, the job of the parent to stay informed. And I think that's critically important. Now, the next thing, which is the balancing act. You gotta be on top of your student, right? You gotta be on top of their progress. But you also have to give them time. You have to be able to give them space because we all know with human behavior, especially with teenagers, if you're gonna be telling them this is what they have to do, they're just gonna do the exact opposite. We have to understand that the learning is, is not finite. Students are not, you know, I know it's so difficult sometimes to, you know, be frustrated if someone's a parent, like you need to learn this by this test or by this end of the quarter. But from my knowledge or from my understanding and working with students is not everybody's going to learn at that same finish line. And that's the problem with our current educational model. And I don't have a quick, easy fix for it. I mean, that is what it is at the moment. So we got to be able to work within the, you know, constraints of that. But I think we also have to understand to like allow our student to, you know, take that initiative, allow them to, you know, get that time to be able to, um, to learn things and, and not to constantly feel the pressure because I've seen these students sometimes where the, you know, they feel so much pressure at home that, um, that it just becomes overwhelming for them. And, you know, that's where they start to begin to hate math. They begin to hate school is because they, the pressure from their parents of having to make sure that they're, they're getting the best grades, that they cannot get anything wrong. They cannot have a failed test. Um, they have to learn, you know, they have to have a great best grade by, you know, that quarter. And it can be overwhelming um, for the students. So I, you know, and obviously we want to have high expectations. I think that was, I would rec I would say, that was one of the things that, you know, had a big impact on me was my parents had high expectations for me, but you can't have high expectations without providing that support. So, and I think a lot of times too, you got to be able to give that time for allow that student to grow, right? And if you're constantly on top of their student, you know, um, and having all this pressure for them to perform, to perform at the highest level, you're not providing that support and you're not giving a lot of the time they're not going to be able to grow on their own, right? They're just going to follow whatever you have. And then they go on to the next level. And whenever they have to do this and, you know, perform on their own um, and figure all this stuff out, they're going to be lost. And I found that a lot of times with students is they couldn't operate without their parents, you know, constant like micromanaging. So with staying on top of your student, having high expectations, giving them support, also give it time, give them time to learn, give them time to, you know, figure, you know, some of these things out um, because we don't want to, Overpressurize, you know, the students, um, and and make the whole experience something that they're going to want to hate and have those forever memories. Because I think a lot of us can all agree we have some of those vivid memories that were like, oh man, I 
hated that. Never want to do that ever again. Right. And I don't, I don't want people to have that taste in their mouth of learning mathematics of it being such a horrible experience. It shouldn't be that way. Now, I think the next thing is that, you know, kind of, it kind of goes, goes along, you know, with them, but I think it is something that's really important when you are being a part of your child's education is one kind of helping them grow into being a student. And what I mean by that is giving them helping them structure their learning time. And I know some students are much better at this than my own. Like my oldest daughter, I doubt I'm going to have to tell her to set up time to study or do her homework. Like she's that very organized kid and she's going to have that self-initiative. Whereas my middle child, she's going to be very, very difficult to work with. Like I'm really going to have to help her setting time frames of like, here, right, here's when we're going to be working on her homework. And, you know, here's like planning everything out. She's kind of more like me in that regard. She's just going to kind of flow with the, go with the flow. So I think it's really important though, to give our students our, give their students the, the foundations for them to be successful because unfortunately not every student is, knows how to be successful in school. Like, I mean, I remember a lot of times when I was first studying, kids were like, I have no idea how to study. Like I have no idea, you know, what to do for math and stuff like that. And, and I try to do my best as a teacher and some teachers are going to provide some really great, um, information for their students to be successful, but sometimes it's just not right. Sometimes it's not going to be adequate for your own child. So I think making sure that you can be involved in their education and and helping them get prepared, helping them plan and organize, because that's been one thing that I've talked a lot about on my channel as far as being successful in math, but also reviewing with your students because failure sucks or getting problems wrong sucks. Um, it's not fun. And a lot of us don't want to face failure. Right? A lot of us don't want to look at our credit card, <laughs> our credit card bill, right? We don't want to look at and take the test and take it home and say, okay, like, yeah, here's where I got everything wrong. But that's where the growth happens. That's where the learning happens. And I think it's really important if you're not critical of your child for getting things wrong, but you're just like, all right, here's what happened. It is what it is. How are we going to do better? Can you like retake this? Can you do test corrections? Like, let's do all the problems you got wrong. You're going to a tutor to get all these out. Like, you have to be involved in looking at their assessment. If they're doing great, that's awesome. But still review the information that they got right, making sure that they have a solid understanding um, of that material. And I think it's very, very important to make sure that you are getting access um, to their stuff. I, as a teacher, always thought it was important. So I always handed back all my tests and quizzes to my students. It did kind of stink as a teacher because I had to keep on recreating them every single year. And I know not all teachers do that. Uh, it is what it is. But I think whatever information you can, or at least you know, meet with the teacher to get some kind of feedback, because I think as part as a parent, your job is to be, you know, involved in their education. And part of that comes into reviewing the information. They get. Even if you have no idea what you're doing, right? But reviewing it with them so they can answer, "Why did you get this wrong?" or, you know, like, "Why did you get this wrong?" Like, what are some things that we can do to now improve upon this? And I think that's extremely important for the uh, learning process. In the end, all we want our students, our children to be is happy. We want them to be happy and we want them to be successful. And I think it's critically important as parents that we realize that the education system is not something that can take care of our child all by itself. It really does take our involvement and it's part of our job as a parent, I think to help support our students throughout this um, learning journey. And it can be difficult and you don't have to be an expert in any of mathematics to help your child be successful. You have to support them. You have to give them time um, and you have to be able to give them resources. So therefore they can put their foot forward. And we all know with children, it's a lot of roller coasters up and down, but I, I believe if we can just make sure that we, our children know that we are there for them and we are assisting them, then we can be able to build a future generation of students that are seeing success in math, do not have that horrible taste of math sucks in their brain, um, and can, um, can go ahead and, um, flourish in society. And that is my goal. That is my wish. And I hope that, uh, um, I hope that your, your child, oh, oh man, how can I wrap this up? Um, and I hope, well, I hope that these tips in this video can help you with your own child being successful in math. Cheers.